Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Lakeside. It is wonderful that we can gather as brothers and sisters in Christ on this beautiful uh, Sunday in July. We come to give thanks for the many blessings in our lives. Uh, we also come with those hurts and those burdens uh, that weigh us down, the challenges of life. And where two or three are gathered, Christ has promised to be present to refresh us, renew us, uh, so that we may leave this place with a bounce in our step and a joy in our heart and ready to serve God in all that we do. Uh, just a reminder at this uh, current time that we are, uh, Holy Communion is the first and third. It takes a little bit more with the, we've gone back to the individual cups uh, rather than intention. And so it takes a little bit more time with, with setup and, and also for cleanup. But uh, just so that we can uh, plan accordingly uh, to communion. And I know that uh, one of the challenges, I know everybody likes to just stand up where they're at and do announcements, but for some of those who uh, cannot be here with us, uh, it's been brought up to me that they can't hear the announcements. Ah, because there's no microphone. So, when we do announcements, we'll, we'll, use, a, we'll use a microphone and then everybody can hear it. Don. Right. Yeah, that would probably be easiest. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I wanted to let you know that I talked to the Webster Elementary School this week and we have updated our school supply list. So I've condensed their list and we'll start collecting. A lot of the sales have started in the store. So if you want to pick up school supplies for the elementary school, I'll have this packet out back and you can take one of these to shop with and then we'll collect them for the next four weeks and then we'll take them to Webster School on the 24th of August. They'll have their open house that week. We usually kick this off with Vacation Bible School, but again this year we had to cancel that, so we need the help of all of you to help support this program. Thank you. Thank you, Don. At this time, I am going to invite, uh, we have uh, new members joining here at Lakeside, and so I'm going to invite uh, Dave and Linda Spidell. Um, Dave and Linda live over in, in Voyager, and they have also joined the choir. Uh -huh. That's what I <laughs> Welcome. And I guess uh, I've already introduced you as the name, but tell a little bit, Lena, about uh, where you lived before moving up to this area. We came from Minnesota, like many people. <laughs> and we lived in Eden Prairie, and we have one son, and he still lives in the Eden Prairie, or Bloomington area. And we belong to St. Andrew, St. Andrew's Lutheran Church, which was a huge church. But we saw this one, and even though it's small, there's a lot of heart here, so. What do I say? Okay. <laughs> well, we came from Minnesota, but I have to say, if, if you're around me a lot, you'll notice I wear Packer and Wisconsin Ooh. stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I grew up more. I grew up most of my life in Wisconsin and, you know, transferred to uh, Minnesota for a job. And actually, Linda's from North Dakota. So the, uh, how we met, that's a long story. <laughs> so we won't say it. But uh, we both are, have been involved in singing for uh, many, many years. And music is a lot of our, our love and passion. So that's, we'll be contributing that way here. Yeah. It is wonderful to uh, have the two of you here at Lakeside as part of our family. So let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this new and beautiful day, and you continue uh, to bless this ministry uh, with new faces and, and new talents. And so, Lord, we invite uh, Dave and Linda into our midst, and we welcome their many gifts. Lord, I'd ask that you would surround them with your love and bless them, uh, that this may be a place where it is joyful to come and where they can sing and where they can work. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
Patty, at this time, prepare us with the prayer. Let us please stand and let us continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ and by grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. May be seated as we sing our gathering song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit, that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray our prayer of the day. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For sharing the peace this morning, I finally had some insight in why Jesus chose fishermen uh, to be his disciples. Because if you're going to have people going into the world and telling people how big God's love is, I mean, it'd be like, Peter, how big's your fish that you caught? <laughs> Peter, how big is God's love? And so, the peace of the Lord be with you all. <laughs>
Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from 2 Kings verses, or chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. Today's reading is a part of a larger section of 2 Kings that describes the miracles of Elisha, the, second, the successor to Elijah. Here the prophet gives food to a hungry crowd. Though there's not enough food to go around, Elisha trusts God who provides enough and even more to satisfy the needs. A man from Belshelisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat, for thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our psalm for today is Psalm 145, verses 10 through 18, and we will read it responsibly. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. <clears throat> you, you are near to all who call upon you to all who call upon you faithfully. Our second reading today is from Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have been rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, which surpasses all human knowledge. Because Christ dwells in our hearts, our lives are continuously strengthened and empowered by the ongoing presence of the Spirit. The reading. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you have been rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses, surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Holy 
Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In John's Gospel, the miracles of Jesus are called signs because they reveal the true character of God. As such, they remain within the mystery of God and cannot be brought under human control. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test Philip, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for such of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, and so also the fish as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fra fra fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And when Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. And when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started across the Sea of Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. And when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. And then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Mike on. I got it, Marshall. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. And uh, just a reminder to all the, our, our Sunday school students, as we will, uh, it won't be that long, a little over a month. We've, usually it's the Sunday right after Labor Day. And uh, we have some exciting news is that hopefully one of our, uh, our former Sunday school students is going to step into the role as sort of our youth education leader. Yeah. So uh, keep Kayla Chastik in our prayers and, uh, and Lori, who has poured her heart and soul, will continue to, uh, to help out. So we, uh, we give thanks for uh, the future. The future, yes. Well, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, we, we have that story of, of Jesus feeding the multitudes. And it begins by, you know, the crowd's coming and he looks at Philip and go, Hey, Phil, how are we going to feed all those people? Huh? What do you mean feed all those people? We, we can't feed all those people. And then uh, I, I think it's almost Andrew, you know, Peter's brother, I think probably sarcastically says, well, there's a boy who has uh, five little barley loaves and a couple fish. Okay. And we have the miracle of uh, the feeding of the 5,000, uh, according to John's Gospel. And this is the feeding of the multitudes is the only 
miracle that is recorded in all four of the Gospels. There are some say, well, how could have that ever took place? I mean, from such meager beginnings. Well, number one is that with God, all things can happen. There are some others who believe that perhaps what happened on that day is that as those who were close to see that here comes this little boy and gives everything that he has and said, here, use it to help feed the people. That others then began going into to their emergency stash. Because for the most part, we, we believe that, that the crowd that followed Jesus were probably not, not rich people. I'm sure some were. But for the most, many wondered where their next meal was going to come from. But when they seen this boy, they actually they went into their, their pockets and they began to get out their emergency stash. And not only did they open it up and begin eating it themselves, but they began saying, here, have some. And began giving it to their neighbors who were gathered in a circle with them. And maybe that's even a bigger miracle than Jesus turning this into a multitude. Is those who, well, I never know, I, I've got to keep this stash for my own because it could be my, to say, I trust that God will provide here, let me share with you. And it's, it's so human nature, is it not, that, boy, we, you know, as we, we get, we look towards retirement, we get into retirement and we're going to go, are we going to have enough, right? Are we going to have enough? And yet, there's that part of us that, oh, just help me to trust. To trust not only that God will provide for me, but God has been so generous that God helped me to trust and to share. Because everything I have, God, I know can, comes from you. And so, Lord, help us all. Help us all to be generous with what we have. You know, we look forward to the day in, in this world when when no child, no person has to go to bed hungry. And, and it can be done. It can be done. We've made progress in the last couple decades. And let us continue to do so. Let us feed the people, both with physical food and the sharing of God's love. So let us pray. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for the rain this past week. It was needed. It was awesome to hear the thunder in the middle of the night and then the rain. What a blessing. We give thanks for our food, our farmers, our markets. Help us to bless others by sharing what we have. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anybody want some goldfish? That's a They're cheddar cheese. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. That's the benediction. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, I'm having a, uh, so let's just go into the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> this particular uh, story, the feeding of the multitudes, uh, it ends with Jesus walking on the water, which uh, <clears throat> I'm going to leave that out today. But I do want to talk about uh, this whole section now for the next uh, four Sundays, four or five Sundays, we're going to be into the sixth chapter of, of John's Gospel. And we are going to be talking about uh, the bread of life, which in the case of Jesus, that means many things. But in the, the, the situation today, it is actual, the physical feeding 
of the multitudes. And I have to say, as you can see, that uh, you know I, I have not missed many meals. And in fact, you know, I grew up on a, on a small dairy farm, and we didn't have a lot of money. I mean, but the one thing that we always were blessed with is that we always had plenty of food on the table. You know, and, and some of it, you know, I didn't like is some of the stuff that I have on the table now, but it was nourishing, and it was good, and there was always plenty. But we also realize that not all have been that fortunate. Uh, my mother grew up uh, during the Depression in uh, the city of Milwaukee. And uh, her dad died when she was in the womb, so here's a young mom with, with two young children in the <clears throat> Depression. And mom said it was, uh, she was also, as much as she couldn't stand peanut butter because that was one of the government foods that was plentiful and it was nutritious. And so she said as a child, she ate a lot of peanut butter. And she said, without that government assistance, she said, I don't know. I don't know how we would have survived. I also thought of, uh, I've been, I was reading a book uh, that I just uh, finished. Uh, how many have ever read the book Unbroken? Yeah, it's, uh, it's powerful. Uh, anybody see the movie? Yeah, I have not seen the movie yet, but uh, the, the book and, and the movie is about, it's a, uh, actually the Olympics have, have started now, and he was an Olympic runner, uh, 1936 Berlin, Berlin Olympics, uh, the Olympics that uh, Jesse Owens, the sprinter, uh, came home with all the gold medals. But there was a, a distance runner, he was running uh, in the 5,000 by the name of Louis Zamperini. And I believe he, he finished eighth. Nothing spectacular, but he was very young. And he was sure that really his best race was the mile. And there are some said that he had the potential to be the first person to break the four minute barrier in the mile. And he was hoping that he was going to do it in the 1940 Olympics. But then something came along. It was called uh, World War II. And he ended up uh, serving uh, in, the, in the Air Force and on a search mission in his B-25 uh, that was uh, named the Green Hornet, it crashed down into the ocean and out of the crew only three survived. Uh, Lewis being one of them, the pilot and one other person. They spent 47 days in a life raft. And I'll let you read the experience, what they went to. One of the three uh, did not survive. Lewis and the, the pilot made it uh, to the Marshall Islands. <laughs> and immediately they get to the Marshall Islands, and guess what? Captured by the Japanese. So he ends up in, in prisoner of war camp. And uh, it, was, it was hard to read. It was hard to read because the beatings that he took because number one, they found out that he was a famous American athlete. And so uh, especially a guard named the bird was just cruel, just cruel. And just beat Lewis just unmercifully day after day. And they didn't have any food. You know, these 150, 160 pound men were now weighing 85 pounds, 85 pounds. And, and then I remember the story that, that they would go and work at, you know, and they, they would shovel coal all day long with, I mean, I don't know how they did it, no energy. But as they were the six mile trek, then they began to see the Japanese farmers out in the field and they were skin and bones because they had nothing. And they actually had compassion for the Japanese farmers, knowing that they were starving to death just like they were. And they actually quit stealing food. <laughs> it, it's an amazing uh, story. And the part that, at the, you know, it, it really, I wasn't sure that, that Louis was going to survive. 
And I kept thinking, I was telling Rhonda, I don't know if I can read this anymore. It really got to the point, it was just so, I, it hurt just to read it. And he does. But I'll share this story. I'll share this story is that all of a sudden, um, the war was over. They didn't even know it yet. But here comes a plane. They're out bathing in the river, and the plane has a torpedo, and they think it's a Japanese plane, and all of this that they survived, and now they're going to be torpedoed. But it's an American plane, and you can imagine the, the joy. And then they're made aware that the, the war is over. And this pilot doesn't have any food to drop, but you know what he drops? <laughs> One candy bar. Now we're talking 700 prisoners. One candy bar with a bite out of it and a pack of cigarettes with one cigarette out of it. And the person was in charge, put them all in groups. And there they all got one piece of the candy bar, now 700 people, and one cigarette. One cigarette, so there was 20 groups. And each person got a puff of the cigarette and they took a knife and they cut one little sliver off that chocolate bar that they could put on their finger and taste. The next day the B-29s came and they began dropping supplies after supplies till finally they took flour and they rode out in the field. No more, no more, we're full. We can, they gorged themselves, can you imagine? Can you imagine after all that time and then there, the B-29s have now supplied all the food that they could eat. The story of Louis goes on because when he returned home, the war didn't leave him, but it, it followed him. And he actually began uh, drinking heavily alcohol and uh, uh, continued, uh, and he smoked cigarettes. And then it was 1949 and his, his marriage was really uh, sort of on the rocks. He had come and married this young girl and then she talked him into doing something and you know what it was? 1949, I believe was the year he went to. He went to a young evangelist in Los Angeles, California by the name of Billy Graham. And he came home that night and he poured all his alcohol out, threw away his cigarettes and the amazing thing is the transformation uh, that took place in his life because, and I don't know how, I don't know how, but he forgave. He forgave all of the prison guards who had mistreated him, including the one called the bird who had so brutally, brutally tortured him. And he often tells, he said, he said, Forgiveness is not so much about the people you are forgiving. It's about the forgiver. He says, because I couldn't sleep until I went to that crusade. Because I had horrible, horrible nightmares. But when I forgave, I haven't had a nightmare since. And he lived to be 97 years of age. But I think about all those prisoners of war. You know, and, and not being able to have the food to sustain them. And then I think about the world that we continue to live in today. You know, it's amazing when uh, we go into our, our supermarkets. Wow. And yet I know that there are, there are those who struggle to find food right here in our own community. And that's why we need places like our local food distribution, right? It, it's what God calls us to do. Because right here, I mean, you see all the, you know, sometimes the beautiful homes on the, the lakes, and you get out, you see the nice boats driving around out there, and the jet skis, and you go, wow, this is a prosperous area. It is. But right in the midst of all the prosperity, guess what? We still have, we still have working poor. And it's why we have the things that we need. And then we go beyond our borders, right? And we know that there are still, there is still a large portion of this world that lacks the basic elements of survival for each day. And so Lord, 
as on that day you fed the multitudes with meager. Sometimes we look with what we have and we go, what difference is it going to make? Maybe it'll make a difference to one person. But Lord, use us. We give you thanks for what you have blessed us with. And Lord, we look forward to that day, you know, when the lamb sleeps with the lion and that no one goes hungry. So Lord, help us to provide physical food for those close by and those that we will never meet far, far away. Use us to be a blessing in the world today, tomorrow, and as long as we take breath upon this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May remain seated and let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers this morning, we will begin by singing our prayer song, Lord, listen to your children praying. I will offer prayers and open it to all who are gathered here and those who are gathered in your homes to lift up your prayers, either silently or aloud, and then we will close by once again singing our prayer song. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church, bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations, empower churches throughout the world, and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors, kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. O oh Lord, we pray for your creation, Send rain to lands experiencing drought 
and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Loving God, we pray for those who govern, cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure all who hunger are fed. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing. And O oh Lord, we pray for those who are gathered here today. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. O oh Lord, now hear the prayers of those who are gathered here this morning. Lord, we pray for Don, for healing. Pray for Dick, for Dorothy, for Ann, for Barb, Lord, all these things we commend to you, trusting in your grace and in your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, for our offering, uh, there is a, a basket behind the baptismal font that if you have brought an offering with you this morning, you may drop it in. We give thanks for your con con continued support of the ministry here, uh, here and at Lakeside, and also for the community, this nation, and the world in which we live. And uh, if you could just put a little bit extra in there, I don't know if you've seen there, our parking lot looks beautiful, right? Uh, all's nice and sealed, and then the geese walk through. So uh, just in case I need a little extra for the fine of uh, taking geese out of season, you might want to just <laughs> a couple extra, just kidding, just kidding. But I do need to buy corn to put over at the Catholic Church. And uh, <laughs> one of these days, people are going to start believing that. Yeah. <laughs> Let us pray our offering prayer. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing our sending song sent forth by God's blessing.
Let us stand as we are able for the benediction. Go in peace, serve the Lord.